right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Ira Wolf, who is in Pennsylvania. How are you doing, Ira? I'm doing really, really well. I appreciate the opportunity, John. Good to be yeah. here. Yeah. And Ira is a millennial trapped in a baby boomer body. <laughs> I love that it, phrase. The baby boomer part here. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, the world's first chief Googleization officer. He's president of Poised for, uh, Poised for the Future, which is Success Performance Solutions, right. as you can see behind Ira there. Um, okay, so what we're going to talk about is recruiting in the age of Googleization. Okay, Ira, so we all know what globalization is, so explain to us what Googleization is. Yeah, thanks. I, I get that question a lot. Uh, so Googleization, um, I was right, uh, kind of the brief history of it. Uh, in, if you roll back the clock about 15 years uh, or so, everybody was talking about the multiple generations of the workplace. Millennials mm -hmm. were just starting to come in. Uh, and uh, so I, I decided I was going to write a book about geeks and geezers, uh, or, or the four generations, right? And uh, I was going to be geeks, geezers, and technology. And then, uh, you know, it was like, eh, didn't like that title. And I looked for an alliteration, and somewhere, I don't know what prompted it, but I came up with Googleization uh, to really represent the convergence of technology, people, and business. And, um, and, and you know, so, and it stuck. Uh, people love the title and, and it's stuck. It's now the title of my uh, podcast. Uh, but Googleization is really, uh, as I said, simply the convergence of people, technology and business. Yeah. And, and so in terms of recruitment, I mean, obviously the recruitment, whole recruitment industry has you know, changed dramatically over the last couple of years. How much, how much uh, has it changed uh, prior to the pandemic and how much has the pandemic actually again accelerated that rate of change? Yeah, it's, it's interesting and I, I always sort of raise my eyes or roll my eyes I guess uh, when we talk about how much recruitment has changed because it's changed um, but it's sort of a, adapted to the technology that was provided and the technology a lot of the technologies that were used which are being used very heavily now mm -hmm. uh, you know post pandemic but over the last few years uh, we're really automating, we're really created to automate the process that businesses were using, which was already becoming out of date uh, with the way that candidates were applying. So, uh, and it was also very employer centric. Um, mm. So, so there, there's still, it was just on a, an interesting call yesterday and that was a whole discussion about, they just had HR tech conference. And at the HR tech conference, they, it was like all, what was new. And last year, it wasn't you, you, you couldn't walk three feet without seeing AI. And now it's mm -hmm. all about diversity and inclusion. Um, and, and they're all important. I don't want to say that that's sure. not people's things. But the reality is, is that people are still trying to take their old processes, the old thing we recruited, and, and automate it. And let's throw more technology on top of that. And then we remove the humanity from that, uh, that personal touch. Um, mm -hmm. what, the, what COVID did, I mean, there, there really, uh, the consensus was from HR tech conference, there wasn't like a whole lot of new stuff, like really looking forward. It was just, oh, we're, we, this, can, this could solve that problem, or boy, if you apply AI to it, now it's a solution. Uh, what COVID did uh, was accelerate, uh, well, it accelerate the, accelerated the exposure of all the vulnerable areas that a business has. <laughs> so it put on hyperspeed. I mean, companies just said, no, 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 re remote working is not gonna work. Uh, we need to be, bring people into an interview. Uh, we're gonna continue to do things the old way and it's gonna go back to the way it was. Uh, and um, it's not. I mean, and, yeah. and so it really, as in everything else, uh, one of them, well, this is pretty common out there. I follow a lot of futurists. And sure. But many people said that we had 10 years of change within three months. And yeah. I, I think that's true. So. No, I, I think that's true as well. And I think it's, a, I think it's an interesting thing because as, I mean, as, as you would know, there was a phenomena kind of after the financial crisis and a number of years ago where, where for the first time, I think people really started to say or question the, the wisdom of 
locating themselves close to a building like the company they worked for often in uh, in high cost suburban areas or further out with long commutes and yet when when the going got rough what happened they're the first people to be laid off and then they're stuck living in high cost areas with mortgages so people you know started to go um hang on a second maybe i should go and find somewhere good to live but somewhere with a good um a good uh, lifestyle or whatever and then go find a job and and i think now with the pandemic this is going to be accelerated where people go okay um remote working is is becoming more acceptable um why don't why don't i go live where i w live somewhere that suits me and then find a remote job so that's going to put pressure on employers right Oh, th oh, there's no question about it. It's already changed. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, again, the conversations, in fact, I was on a, on a panel, I had lots of interviews <laughs> lately, uh, mm -hmm. but we were on a panel the other day and then it came up in this conversation yesterday uh, of what happens to compensation um, now yeah. that we can hire people. So, you know, before as we had to bring people into New York, San Francisco, um, you know, Dallas, Chicago, some of the higher areas. And now it's realizing, you know, now that we can, we can hire people globally, um, and, and we're much more accommodated, you know, companies are much more accommodated to be able to do that. Um, but if we can find somebody in uh, Des Moines, Iowa, or uh, Butte, Montana, um, who doesn't have that same cost of living, what happens to the compensation and benefits? Um, mm -hmm. That's a subject that needs to be resolved yet. It, it's not even, I won't even say it's in its infancy, but the conversation has started. And there are some companies that have said, but that really doesn't matter. I mean, if, if, if you're talented, we're going to pay you for the talent you bring to the organization. Right. Uh, and other organizations that said, no, we're not going to pay somebody, uh, you know, a 50% or a 75% premium um, because they, they need to be able to afford housing in this area. Uh, so we're, we're, we're going to remove that. Um, you know, the judgment's still out where that's going to fall. And, and it's probably going to be some hybrid of that. But just to give people kind of a, a real good sense of how things have changed. Um, the, when we talk about recruitment, something as basic as the application, how do people apply? And certainly we've gone away from uh, 20 or 30 years ago, maybe when, you know, certainly when I started a career, maybe when you did, uh, <laughs> that we would, um, you know, fill out an application. Sometimes you actually went to the place and filled it out where they sent it to you, you mailed it, um, then you created a resume, but it basically, it took some type of commitment, but we had to fill out an application, we had to apply and we had to send it and we had to yeah. get it. And then job boards came along and it became pretty easy. And then there's quick apply that I no longer have to type, you know, copy uh, or type mm -hmm. out the resumes. Uh, I just go to, to you know, career, career Boat and Monster, ZipRecruiter Indeed, uh, put it in once, click apply, and it goes out to 100 places. So the whole dynamics of that change. But at the core of that, what we missed was at the core of that, we're still using the same, companies are still, still using the same application. It's still, what's your name? what's your address, mm -hmm. where you live, what's your last three <laughs> employers, your references, all that stuff. You have to go through that whole thing. And um, literally 98% of the information that a company requires in the first five to 10 minutes has nothing to do with job qualifications. Yeah. So people are filling out all this information. My, my kind of analogy of how things have changed is that Amazon, um, updates their software algorithm every 11.6 seconds. So uh -huh. based on the information that they're getting, receiving, adapting, responding, they're much more consumer oriented. There's a better experience of recommending what, what they think I'd like to see. And if, and if they recommend something and nobody clicks on it, then they go, well, this isn't working, let's change it. Um, the application we're using is the same one from 1950. It's uh, just digital, that's all. <laughs> So, so what does that what does that tell us, uh, Ira, in terms of HR and companies and the whole recruiting strategy or what they're looking for? I mean, what does it tell us about the the, the how they look at recruiting still? Um, well, recruitment's marketing. I mean, in, in that sense, I mean, recruitment mm -hmm. is really how do you treat your customers, yeah. candidates? Well, maybe customers. maybe maybe put it another way about qualifying those qualifying um, candidates or or looking at the right data to select the best candidates. What does it say? Because I, I agree with you. I mean, I think people still largely do it in in a very traditional way, and they haven't evolved or modified it very much. 
Um, you know, I'm going to be pretty harsh. I mean, in, in candid, um, I mean, it's pretty bad um, because we collect, HR collects a ton of data, mm -hmm. some good, some not. I mean, whether it's their name or where they lived and, you know, but it's the qualifications, how many years of experience they have, what did they bring to the table, what were the skills. So HR collects as much or more data than sales, marketing, and operations. They collect it. They just don't do anything with it. HR is really behind on, on data analytics, whether we want to call it people analytics or data analytics or predictive analytics. Uh, they just haven't captured it. And one of the reasons why is even so in your world, like as a CRM, is um, they don't have that. There, there are a bunch of products out there that, people, that, that information is collected from multiple sources, which means that there is no... Synchro, uh, uh, synchronicity between their databases. I mean, it's yeah. not clean data. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you have payroll and you have comp and then you have your, your ATS and your application process. Uh, and then the recruiters have their own database, uh, you know, maybe in a spreadsheet, you know, maybe in some platform. Um, but you have all these sources of data that aren't necessarily utilized. So there's a disconnect yeah. from here's the data we had from recruitment and then here's the data we had from the screening process, which might be from hiring managers and notes on interviews right. that they don't necessarily capture. And then we have dates on managing. And so we have their payroll, we have their attendance, we have their start date, their finish date, performance reviews. I'm not suggesting annual ones, but any type of a rating mm -hmm. about what they did, yeah. still a horrible mess. Um, so even if they do have all this data, it's on these, you know, it's unclean and it's on multiple databases and uh, it's a tremendous amount of work. So that, that's where we need to clean this mess up. So. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, as we know, data is only as good as the, the conclusions that you can draw from it. So if you, don't, if you can't bring the data together, you can't have it clean and you can't analyze it easily, um, then it's great, lovely to have the data, but largely useless, uh, to be honest. And as you say, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the purpose of, of, of CRM is like to analyze data properly. So how can you, how can organizations move away from this? Because at the end of the day, I mean, let's be honest, a lot of recruiting today is still pretty much a, a crapshoot, right? I mean, it is. I mean, I've always said to people, you know, you, you don't really know how a candidate works out until about six months into their job, unfortunately. I mean, regardless of, you know, there's, you know, people have tried to construct better ways of analyzing people and all that. But, but it's still today, you know, getting a good, a good panel of candidates just seems as hard as ever. Well, there's two parts. One is is recruitment is marketing, so you need a marketing mm -hmm. strategy. Most HR yeah. didn't have that. It's like they had their database. How do they go out? Oh, we're going to try Indeed. Oh, Indeed didn't work out. Maybe we should try LinkedIn. Maybe we should try ZipRecruiter. Uh, should we use that? You know, wh what do we use? So there was really no overall strategy, and then the strategy wasn't measured. So one is uh, I have an acronym in my book, and it was called Reach, and and I couldn't come up with another <laughs> another letter to rep or another word to represent R, but is how do you reach candidates? So that's a marketing issue. And then the second is how do you engage them? And which is also marketing. So how do we contact people? How do, how do we, why would they be willing to have a conversation with us? Mm -hmm. and then it becomes an HR process. So it's, it's reach, engage, and then apply. What's the application look like? And the application itself, uh, as we just went through, is, is really bad. Yeah. But most companies without measuring don't know that they have a, between a 70 and a 90% abandonment rate which means that they sometimes have a great marketing process. They do reach them and the person says, hey, I'm interested in this company, I'm gonna click apply. And then they look at the application and 70 to 90% of the people back out. That's not a marketing failure, it's not a recruitment failure, it's an HR failure. Um, mm. So what needs to change? And you need a shorter, faster screening application and that can be done through a chat bot. You can ask five questions such as, are you willing to relocate? Do you have five years yeah. of experience? You know, whatever those five questions that they answer, no, they're out, don't waste anybody else's time. Uh, and then you have to have a conversation because you still have this black hole. As soon as yeah. somebody applies, you get the standard, uh, thank you for applying, uh, we'll be in touch. And then they never hear from anybody. And then, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, then the, and then the last part is H, which is, uh, which is hiring. 
And hiring does not stop at the job offer. Hiring, you need a good onboarding process. You need to greet them. You need to, to follow through, is identify why do, why do um, so many people fail? Uh, the numbers are astronomical. So many mm -hmm. people fail within the first 30 to 90 days or 60 to 90 days. And it's because the onboarding is horrible. Uh, they got there yeah. and the job that they were looking for uh, or the job that they were hired for isn't the job that they were that they're going to yeah. be doing. Uh, so expectations are way off. So uh, what needs to change is at some it's as simple. It's just follow the reach process. Is how are we doing on each mm -hmm. of those? What needs to change? And then and then there's a whole obviously. Yeah. And and I think a lot of times too, it's in also in the in the job definition. A lot of it fi um, falls on the on the hiring manager, the person who's looking, because I think ill-defined jobs. I had I had an interesting experience. I have to say back when. When I first came to the, the States, I, I was in Silicon Valley during the dot-com era. And, and a dot-com company who shall remain nameless, um, a, a recruiter contacted me to go uh, and, and uh, interview with them for, for an executive level job. So I went out and met with them and I met with all the members of the executive team. And uh, by the end of the interview process, when I came back to meet their CEO, I said to, I said to the CEO, I said, you have created a, a job here that is basically just a composite of every bit of other people's jobs that they don't want to do, they don't like, and it's complicated. And I said, this job is completely set up to fail. I'm sorry to say that, so I'm not interested. And uh, <clears throat> and they actually, it's funny, they came back to the recruiter and they said, uh, you know, when we sat down and talked about this, he was absolutely right. So we've gone back to re-examine this. But I do think to, it's still a lot of the fault falls on ill-defined jobs or creating jobs that are set up to fail. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's still a request. I mean, I, I would say on a daily basis, I get a request, uh, either because somebody's a client or it was mm. just randomly. Uh, do you have a job, you know, do you have a job description I can use? Yeah. And it's like, well, I worked in another company. It may not have been good in that company, but just because somebody went through that formal process doesn't mean it's very good. So I, always, I, when I get on a call, if somebody calls me up and says they're looking for an assessment, they're looking. My first thing is, if we sit, if you and I, John, are sitting down yeah. a year from now, what is it that that person has to accomplish? How will you measure their success twelve months from now? And I would tell you that ninety. I'm being generous here. 90% of the people do not know what success looks like if that person mm -hmm. came. And if you don't know what, how you're going to measure that person's success on the job 12 months from now, regardless of what they're supposed to do, then there is no way to say what skills do they need, what competencies they, do they need, and what are their responsibilities. So I always start with that question is, yeah. how would you define success 12 months from now or, or whatever it is, three months from now, two years from now, whatever period of time you want to take. And then from there you say, okay, based on that, what are they supposed to do to accomplish that? What are the responsibilities? And then what were the skills that they would need to accomplish those responsibilities? It seems like a simple process. You know, what, what's your goal? What do they need to do to get there? And what skills do they need to, to accomplish that? Um, yeah. Most companies don't have it, like, as you said. Well, well, no, because I mean, in I mean, I think uh, you know, if we're being brutally honest here, I mean, we're terribly lazy when it comes to these things, right? We just see there's there's something, there's a gap or a need that needs to be filled right now, and instead of us going through the process, you said, okay, defining the right person for it, defining what the job would be, all of that, we just sort of, as you say, find a find a job description online and get a body in there. And, and as you say, uh, when it's an ill-defined uh, position and success is ill-defined, then in a couple of months we're going, why did we hire that person again? And that person is sitting there going, why did you hire me? <laughs> right. Yeah. In, in HR for years, I mean, I've been in this business 25 years and, mm -hmm. and, and, and again, I didn't go into HR. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and for years I said I wasn't in HR, but I obviously am. <laughs> uh, but HR for years has been fighting for the seat at the table. The mm -hmm. problem at the, is not the seat at the table. The, the problem is they needed a voice at the table. So yeah. all of a sudden, as they said, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, we're going to welcome you. Yeah, you're a really important part. People are our most important uh, assets in the company. You should be in this room, but we're not going to allow you to speak. <laughs> so, or we're not going <laughs> to listen to what you say because we don't have the budget. We don't have the time or you don't have the data. 
you're talking about soft and you know we think we feel this is going to be the way to do it or i just went to a conference and they said we should do that and they go where's the data can you document how are we going to measure progress and they go oh uh i don't know uh maybe the tech my the vendor said the technology you know the tool would do that so. yeah yeah you know it's 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 fun it is it is fascinating because um everything what you're saying here i mean you know we started off talking about technology and that but everything that you're saying here basically boils down again to doing proper work right it is like defining roles properly and um, having you know your your reach uh, your reach strategy in place um, defining the role, making sure that they understand what success looks like, then going out and finding the right um, the right candidates, making it easy for candidates to come to you, to the the right candidates to come to you. So it's a, uh, it, it's it's funny, isn't it? The more we progress and we're talking about technology, the more it comes down to doing a lot of the basics. Oh, absolutely. You know, I gave a talk uh, two years ago. This, this year they didn't have it, but uh, so a year and a half ago at the National SHRM sure meeting, and it was keeping the H in HR. And, and right. part of the problem everybody thought it was like, oh, thank goodness, he's going to talk about why we shouldn't you be using technology. And my message is really, you need to use technology so it frees up the time. Quit doing all the manual, tedious stuff that yeah. you do, uh, to keep your, all the busy work so that you can actually engage with people. Uh, and what HR did was they defaulted to the technology that, oh, we can automate this. We don't have to talk to anybody except yeah. the candidates. Uh, and it was a horrible customer experience mm -hmm. uh, that people had. So uh, again, um, you know, technology is really important. I'm, I'm not here. Uh, I'm the first person to tell you that you really need to use technology. Uh, for sure. And you need to use it better. But it's a means of how do we get more information? How do we get to the right people faster? And yeah. that, that didn't exist. The strategy is not there. And HR is a business function, or it should be a business function. It, and just like operations and sales and marketing that get measured on success, and they have KPIs and they have to meet them, HR absolutely needs to be there. And the metrics aren't that everybody got paid on time. That's an important mm -hmm. metric. That should be a given. It's like the people that we were paying the most to, uh, should they, you know, are they the most important people? Um, do we have, do we true? Yeah, you know, we measured diversity, HR measured diversity, but not inclusion. So everybody met the EO guidelines, you know, that we had 13% uh, 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 Hispanics and 18% blacks um, and, you know, an equal, you know, 50, 50 on gender. Mm -hmm. Great. That doesn't mean that it was inclusive or equitable. It doesn't, yeah. just because you have those numbers doesn't mean that an equal candidate who was a, a black female was getting the pay as, the same as a white male in a VP yeah. position. Why was that? So those are the things, the data was sitting right there. It's still sitting right there mm -hmm. and, and, and wasn't being used. So that's, that's where the direction's going. And, and to, to, be, to, to give credit where credit's due, there are companies that are actually doing that. There are a lot of companies that are doing it, small and large, but there's still, I still hear most people are still hearing the same silly conversations we always heard. Yeah. Well, I think as we said, I mean, I think now with the with the changes in 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 employee behavior and you know how they where they want to live, what kind of jobs they want, all of that kind of thing, I think it's going to force employers to start to make some some changes but but just back to your your point again about it i totally agree on technology and obviously like we're a technology company um is but but as you say technology won't solve a problem for you if you're not willing to actually do the work of in of, of like figuring out the processes figuring out the issues and then leveraging the technology to support you it, technology isn't magic it doesn't i love how people love to think oh we'll solve this problem we'll put in we have a communication problem okay put in a communication technology <laughs> yeah slack is fix it yeah put in slack or Zoom. Oh, we yeah, still Zoom. we yeah we still have a technology problem. Oh, that that technology was rubbish, and you're right. going and, no, and, and, you didn't fix the pro you didn't fix the problem. Yeah. Well, again, people need to know what the goal is. What what it, yeah. how are they going to do it? They need to change the process. So, uh, you know, I just started teaching a graduate program, and you know, it was supposed to be classroom. It got forced. You know, it got forced online. Sure. Which was great. I was hoping it was online. You know, but I, I so I, but through that process, I've been reading a lot just on it. You know, we're, everybody's hearing a lot on education. Just mm -hmm. because you, you use Zoom for online communication or online teaching does not mean you're digital. It just means that 
you you can't use the same process to teach. You can't use the same process yeah. to manage people just because everybody now is now comfortable using Zoom. It's a different um, it's a different interaction, um, yeah. different dynamics involved in it. And just and going back to recruitment. Um, ATSs were great. Uh, there's some really, really good ones out there and they've done a lot of good things, you know, integrating with, you know, they measure engagement and they use social media. They do all that stuff. The problem is, is that a company buys it and that becomes their process because yeah. it was designed on a successful process, but you have to change your mindset. You have to adapt to that. You can't use somebody else's business model and not change the people within it. It just yeah. doesn't work. Exactly, exactly. Hey, listen, Ira, this has been fantastic. All of Ira's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. As you can see, my company is Success Performance Solutions. Uh, we primarily work with small, medium-sized companies. We have some large ones. We have some public companies, but usually small, medium-sized, privately-owned companies. Uh, and we help them recruit faster and hire smarter. Uh, we do that through, as we talked about today, uh, you know, helping them on, on a recruitment marketing side. We don't recruit for them, but we help them create a better process, much better candidate experience. And then uh, primarily most people know us because we do pre-employment and leadership assessments. Fantastic. And you can find out more about the website, successperformancesolutions.com, or connect with me on LinkedIn. Yeah, and as I said, all the links will will be below um, be below the video. Listen, Ira, this is great. I mean, I think it's a really, really important topic uh, because, as I said, I think things are changing. I think, well, you know, things are changing out there, and companies are going to have to adapt um, in order to find the right, not just find the best talent, but also accommodate how different you know the different talent want to orient their 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 approach to work and where they live and all that kind of stuff so i think it's really important topic so thanks again for joining us today my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeliner crm i will see you all for another interview really soon thank you